So that's very good. So you were able to realize that Pavlov is in Nash equilibrium, but we can go further than that or farther than that. Further. We can go further than that and show that, in fact, Pavlov is subgame perfect. So unlike tit for tat, it's actually uh, subgame perfect. So let's, uh, let's take a look at how we could convince ourselves of that. So I think the important thing to see is that by feeding these two Pavlov machines different sequences, we can get into any of these four different combinations of states. They're both in the cooperation state. They're both in the... Uh, both in the defect state, one's cooperate, one's defect, one's defect, and one's cooperate. Mm -hmm. And so is it the case that no matter which state those are in, that the average reward is going to be mutual cooperation? So let's check. So if they're both cooperating, and then now we continue with these Pavlov machines, then they will mutually cooperate. So mm -hmm. yes. All right. Uh, if we're in defect effect, then what's going to happen? Well, then they both agree, so they cooperate. So they're going to move to cooperate, and then they'll stay there forever. So then that, that'll be mutual cooperation. Awesome. What if one's in cooperate and one's in defect? Then they disagree. Right. And they move to the other state. Uh, more specifically, what? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm trying to keep track of, who, of who's who. So if I cooperate and you defect, then uh, let's see. The guy who cooperates moves to defect, and the guy who defects moves to defect. Because so you and now you agree, and so you're going to cooperate. Boom. So when we're in the cooperate defect state, then on the first move, let's see, you just def yeah, the right, right hand Pavlov just defected, so that causes this transition, and this guy just cooperated, which causes this transition, so that we've gone to defect effect. Right. Which means that we're going to average cooperation because that's mm -hmm. where we're going to get stuck in the long run, right. and the same thing works through here. Boom. That's actually very cool and kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, that's really neat. So it's sort of no matter what weird sequence we've been fed, we managed to resynchronize and then return to a mutually cooperative state. So I have a question for you. Go for it. So presumably this is really cool, like mathematically, because now we should all do we should all be Pavlovians, like we're all Keynesians, and then we just kind of move forward from there. Do people do this? I I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, other um, than men on a basketball court. Sure, you can always return to that. Though I, I'm not sure I'm aware of any analyses of men on a basketball court and whether or not, uh, you know, people have analyzed that. Hmm. Uh, but how about this? If I find out, I will post something on the instructor comments. Okay, that sounds reasonable. So Pavlov is subgame perfect. That's awesome. So remind me again why I care that something's subgame perfect. Ah, because it means that, so let's say that you actually, so I'm being this left Pavlov, and you defect on me, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to defect on you because I just want to take advantage of you, because you're going you're gonna to forgive me, and I will have gotten this extra bonus for that. And what it turns out is that, no, if we do Pavlov against Pavlov, we're going to fall into mutual cooperation no matter what. So, so, so this defection that I do, this, this threat, this punishment that I deal out to you, you can earn it back and we can go back into a cooperative state. Right. So it's it's worth it to me to punish you because I know that it's not going to cost me anything in the long run, and it stabilizes your behavior in the short run. Sure, it makes perfect sense. So it becomes a plausible threat. I like it.